sound engineers assemble and operate equipment used to create great audio for production. In this video, we're gonna help you answer the question, should you become a sound engineer in 2021? We're gonna go over the latest salaries, job market statistics, and the latest trends. Coming up. Hey everyone, Stephen Hack here with Career Watch, where I help you with your career search. If you end up enjoying the video, hit that thumbs up to support the channel. All the charts and graphs used in this video are available at my blog at the link below. Sound engineers have several roles and responsibilities. Sound engineers record speech, music, and other sounds. They work with producers, performers, and other team members to achieve the desired sound in a production. They separate and combine different vocals, music, and instruments during mixing and post-production. During recording, they often regulate the volume levels of these different audio sources. They also set up, test, and adjust recording equipment for recording sessions and live performances. If there's any issues with equipment, they'll investigate those issues and they'll check on the repairs. Sound engineers also convert video and auto recordings into digital formats. For more technical information on this occupation, check out the Coursera course, Fundamentals of Audio and Music Engineering. This course is taught by Dr. Robert Clark in association with the University of Rochester. It retails for around $50 and currently has an average 4.6 star rating. Doing different online courses on occupations is a great way to explore different careers. So what is the average salary of an audio engineer? Well, this first set of data is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It doesn't include benefits, overtime, and other forms of compensation. This is only base salaries. Compared to similar occupations, sound engineers do really well. They tend to make more money than announcers, audio and visual techs, broadcast techs, musical instrument repairers and tuners, and photographers. In 2019, the government recorded the average base salary of sound engineers at around $67,000 per year as a base salary. And this average base salary for sound engineers has been increasing over the years. In 1999, the government recorded the average base salary of a sound engineer at around $35,000 per year. This rose to $67,090 in 2019. This gives us a wage growth from 1999 to 2019 of around $32,000, which comes out to an average yearly wage growth of about $1,600 per year. If we were to take this average yearly wage growth in 2021, the average base salary for a sound engineer would be around $70,000, and this would increase to around $83,000 in 2029. This average base salary is a national average, so a lot of variables actually go into how much money sound engineers tend to make. A lot of factors go into the compensation of sound engineers. At the 10th percentile of wages, a starting salary probably for a sound engineer would probably be around 26,000 per year. Whereas someone that has lots of experience, works in a very hot job market in a hot industry, uh, the top 10% of sound engineers earn more than $121,000 per year. One of the variables that influences the compensation of sound engineers is geography. Different states tend to pay sound engineers different amounts of money. In this map, the beige colored states have no data at all associated with them, and the darker blue states tend to pay sound engineers a greater amount of money. In 2019, the lowest paying state for sound engineers was the state of Utah, where the average base salary was around $28,000 per year. Whereas the highest paying state for sound engineers in 2019 was the state of Connecticut, where the average base salary was around $95,000 per year. So there's a $67,000 difference between the lowest paying state for sound engineers and the highest paying state. And a lot of variables like industry and experience go into this as well. Other high paying states include the state of New York, California, Washington DC, Georgia, Kentucky, and Illinois. So one of the big variables that goes into the compensation of sound engineers is industry. Certain industries tend to pay sound engineers much more than others. The motion picture industry tends to pay sound engineers much more than other industries. This would be sound engineers that work for Netflix, Disney, and Hollywood. In fact, there's quite a difference in pay between sound engineers that work in the motion picture industry where the average base salary is around 86,000 per year and the lowest paying industry, which was found to be independent artists, writers, and performers, where the average base salary was around 47,000 per year, almost half of what sound engineers that work in the motion picture and video industries tend to make. So that covers the compensation of sound engineers across the United States in 2019. Next, what is the job market like? Is it really challenging to get into this occupation? Well, the first thing to do is look at job postings across the United States. I use Indeed.com because Indeed pulls in job postings from many different sources. So here's a quick video of me finding different job postings for this occupation across the United States. Okay, here we are in Indeed.com. We're gonna be looking at different job postings for audio engineers, and we're gonna use different titles. So first we're gonna look at titles that have audio engineer in them 
in the United States. So this gives us about 252 job postings across the United States. Next, let's take a look at audio operator, where audio operator is in the job title, about 10 jobs. Mixing engineer, how about, how many jobs are gonna have mixing engineer in the job title, five. Recording engineer, about eight jobs. Sound engineer, almost got it, there we go. About 17 jobs, studio engineer. About 71 jobs, and finally sound technician. About 31 jobs. So adding all those job postings together gave us around 382 job postings for this occupation across the United States. In 2019, the government recorded 12,890 employed sound engineers across the United States. This gives us one job opening on Indeed.com per 34 employed sound engineers. So this is actually a pretty competitive occupation. It isn't quite that easy to get into based off this variable. There are definitely easier occupations to get into based off the number of job postings available. The other thing to keep in mind about this occupation is that it is a pretty small workforce of only around 12,890 employed. There are a greater number of people working as announcers, audiovisual techs, broadcast techs, photographers, but there are more sound engineers than musical instrument repairs and tuners. One of the biggest cons of working for a small niche occupation such as this one is that you often have to move across the country or move to a different town or metro area to find certain job opportunities. It isn't like say becoming a registered nurse or a software developer where there are job opportunities in every nook and cranny across the country. And unfortunately for sound engineers, the number of job opportunities has been declining a little bit over the past decade. In 1909, the government recorded 9,380 employed sound engineers across the country. This hit a high of 16,600 in 2008, but since then the number of employed has been falling. In 2019, the government recorded 12,890 employed sound engineers in the United States. This means that from 1999 to 2019, there was a gain of 3,500 jobs, but the trend since 2008 hasn't been very good. Meanwhile, the government is predicting a 6% increase in the number of employed sound engineers from 2019 to 2029. So by 2029, they're anticipating around 14,000 employed sound engineers. So this occupation will remain a pretty small niche occupation. It isn't gonna grow by leaps and bounds. Like I said previously, this is a small niche occupation and often with small niche occupations, certain states have way more job opportunities than other states. This is definitely the case with this occupation. As you can see in this map, the darker blue states have most of the jobs. California overall has the greatest number of job opportunities for people in this occupation with 4,160 employed sound engineers. So almost 33% of all employed sound engineers are in the state of California, and New York comes in second with around 1,830 employed sound engineers. So to work in this occupation, you really need to live in very specific places. One nice part about this occupation is one industry doesn't dominate it. Actually, only 26% of sound engineers work in the motion picture and video industry. About 26% work in sound recording industries, 18% are self-employed, 6% work in radio and television broadcasting, and 6% work in at four performing arts companies. So sound engineers can work in a wide variety of different industries. Although, like I said before, the motion picture and video industry tends to pay them a lot more than other industries. So the next question is, would this occupation be compatible with your interests? To determine this, definitely look into taking a RIASEC assessment. This is known as an interest inventory. You fill out an assessment, you submit it, and then it gives you codes for six different themes. Sound engineers that take a RIASEC assessment tend to score high in the realistic and artistic themes. People that score high in the realistic theme tend to describe themselves as reliable, practical, thrifty, reserved, and self-reliant, and they, are, they often enjoy building things, repairing things, and being outdoors. People that score high in the realistic theme also tend to like working with their hands. People that score high in the artistic theme, meanwhile, tend to describe themselves as creative, independent, unconventional, intuitive, and expressive, and they are motivated by creative insights and self-expression. 
So you do have, you do need to be a little bit artistic to really enjoy this occupation. As for the educational requirements to become a sound engineer, they are actually all over the place. According to the Occupational Information Network, 22% of sound engineers have an associate's degree, or 22% have a bachelor's degree. And then they just list 56% have other. So sound engineers can definitely come from many different backgrounds. So as you can see, there are pros and cons becoming a sound engineer in 2021. Compared to similar occupations, sound engineers do pretty well financially. They tend to make more than similar occupations, and they have had pretty good wage growth over the past two decades. The big challenge with this occupation is that there's not a lot of job postings compared to the number of employed. We found only a little over 300 job postings across the United States, and many of the employed sound engineers live in very specific places, mainly California and the state of New York. Not only that, the number of employed sound engineers has actually been falling since 2008. So if these trends continue, it's gonna become more and more challenging to work as a sound engineer in 2021 and in the future. Are you a sound engineer? What do you enjoy about this occupation? What do you dislike about this occupation? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.